Folks, this one is for you today, tonight, this weekend, next month, whenever you're listening to this, just know this one's for you, right? This one is for us and we're going to take them all back, baby. This is Vanderpump Rules, season 11, episode five. We are in the heart of darkness. We are in Tahoe this week. And uh, let's see if we can make uh, make some funnies out of this very tragic group of friends. Should we even call them friends? This this tragic group of people that have known each other now for uh, more than a decade. And uh, I feel like we're nearing the end <laughs> as we know it, uh, even though the show will probably continue for years and years. How the heck is everybody doing out there? Listen, I took Wednesday off. Sometimes I'll do four episodes a week. Sometimes I'll do five. Sometimes I'll do six. Uh, but I did like three Patreon episodes uh, this past week. I did a Traders recap with uh, some Love is Blind commentary. I also did uh, a Summer House uh, conversation over on Patreon. And then we did the Patreon Live on Monday. So if you want more, it's over there, patreon.com forward slash so bad it's good. But also, I want to tell you the reason why I took off today, too, because... Uh, I was a guest on another uh, couple's podcast that I was really excited uh, about. So I'm going to tell you about it. So hopefully you'll go listen to that as well. But I wanted to make sure you guys are good. If you're good, that's all that matters. So we can have fun together. We can be silly. We can be stupid. Remember, I'm potentially going to say things that are going to upset, offend, titillate. Uh, but I mean, listen, we're just ha- we're just being goofy. We're just sa- we're we're just saying silly silly jokes, silly funnies, right? That's it. Nobody can get hurt by any of this stuff. Also, I just watched the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills uh, part one of the reunion, which I'll be doing a recap of on Friday. Uh, Morgan Way, I'm Morgan Wade. She has not made an appearance at the reunion yet. Kyle has not allegedly come out yet. I'm hearing that's potentially not going to happen during this but we'll see right like i don't i'm just i'm just a viewer i'm just watching with my popcorn and my cheese wondering what's happening out there but we'll do that recap and i'll also uh be talking a little bit about the leah mcsweeney uh lawsuit that is pushing forward towards andy cohen i'll be talking about that on friday's episode as well and you know that's really it's a very interesting issue in so many ways and obviously it's a very heated topic as well because I think you've always, you know, I, 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 I've been reading the court papers, the court documents, but it's a really interesting thing because you have to bring up people's past behavior. Um, you know, we we now have stories from Brandy Glanville, Leah McSweeney, um, you know, the Bethany Frankel of it all. Then, of course, Caroline Manzo. There's a lot of things to talk about. And it's hard, though, because at the end of the day, we are watching these shows. And I even watching Vanderpump Rules tonight, you know, uh, Tom was bringing up, he's like, dude, um, to say thank you for this trip, I'm uh, bringing a meditation specialist in. And listen, as I get older, I get more into stuff like that, sure. But man, I would have loved if Tom was like, as a thank you, I'm bringing a person that does professional <laughs> beer bongs. Like, I just want, like, I'm like, just pound drinks already. Just pound drinks already. Hug it out. Slap each other. Do whatever you need to. But we are primed as an audience sometimes to expect that sort of stuff. And I think it's an interesting conversation that not only Bravo obviously has to have from within, but as the audience, we have to have that conversation with ourselves too of why do we watch these shows, right? Why do we watch these shows? Listen, we all know now by Scandal was such a huge success and we were watching like this real drastic thing happen. There were so many things happening at once and it was just amazing television. But now we're on the other side of that. And it is interesting, even when I fall into that pattern and watching of like, God, can't we just can't do this? Can we just throw a drink in Tom's face and then they bro it out and hug later? You know, like and it is interesting because sometimes these characters are trapped. It's like the whole theme of this season for me with Vanderpump Rules, and I've said it many times, is that they are chained to this show. It's like ghosts haunting a haunted mansion like they cannot escape. I'm not saying they want to escape, but that's this kind of thing is like they can't leave for so many reasons. And it makes it an interesting experience. And then as the audience, we're like, oh, man, remember when they used to get really fucked up? And like it is that conversation that you have to have with your, you know, yourself. And I read so much commentary of, oh, my God, it's just so boring. It's so boring this season. And there's elements to that that I agree with, uh, you know, there, there's elements to it, but at the same time, it would potentially be false in their lives 
to just get hammered on camera. And that's the kind of pressure we don't want to put on shows. Uh, that's also one of the arguments Leah McSweeney is potentially arguing in this lawsuit is that she felt pressure. But my thing is, as a, a viewer, and I talked about this on the Spencer and Heidi podcast that I did yesterday, is that I don't want to feel like I'm, uh, I'm responsible. I have enough responsibility in my own life that I'm not good at that. I do not want to be responsible for reality show characters as well and their mental health. I do not want to be responsible for, well, I felt pressure from the audience and Bravo to like uh, ruin my sobriety. I want to know that I'm watching people that are really fully fleshed out, interesting characters, men and women that sometimes kind of tend to go a little nuts but they still have personal responsibility and autonomy of their own actions and their own bodies. And when sometimes I feel like you, it is thrown directly onto the audience, like Tom does this season of like, oh, I'm so mad at everybody out there making memes and podcasts and shirts. Not so much. I'm not angry at myself so much, weirdly enough, but everybody else I'm so mad at. I sometimes feel like that is shirking your own personal responsibility. That stuff isn't fun. It doesn't add anything uh, good, obviously for them. But I do want to believe that they are strong enough sometimes to be able to deal with it. And Tom, especially being in 11 seasons of this show, but reading those court documents with Leah, it, you know, I very much applauded Lisa, uh, Leah in the second season of Real Housewives of New York, you know, leaning into her sobriety. You know, I thought that was kind of fantastic. Yeah. It wasn't as great as throwing tiki torches, but like, wow, what a responsible person realizing after watching themselves on TV and even realizing personally that there was a problem. There had always been a problem if you read her book, you know, and that she was taking responsibility for that and changing. Um, and then, you know, not coming back to Real Housewives of New York, but then letting time pass and then ex ex um, accepting $250,000 to go on Ultimate Girls Trip. I think that is the part where it gets cloudy in my mind, where it's like, um, okay. Uh, I love all of that, but you came back and sometimes if you're going to get the other housewives ribbing you about not drinking, I do want to believe that I'm watching people that are strong enough um, that they can handle that. They can handle a little ribbing, realizing, listen, at the end of the day, I know I'm doing what's right for myself. I mean, Carl Radke is a perfect example. I've already watched tomorrow night's um, Summer House episode, and you're going to see a big storyline about Carl and drugs and Lindsay, and it, it's really interesting. And it gave a lot of perspective, and uh, it it, it you some more things are going to become clear that fill out the entire picture after watching tomorrow night's episode. But Carl also is very protective of his sobriety, and it might not make him the most fascinating character on television, but I would much rather watch that. Then somebody years down the line suing uh, somebody and, and, and blaming what I think sometimes is somebody's own personal responsibility is that at this point, Housewives has been have been on, what, over 18 years or something wild like that. If you go back to the first season of Real Housewives of Orange County, is that I want to believe that if you have all of this media to study, that people walking into these scenarios should be really clear about what they're getting into at this point. If you go onto any sort of social media, which comes with the game, you know, you're mostly going to be loved, but you're also going to get a lot of hate. I deal with that on a very small scale myself. It sucks. I get it. It hurts all of that shit, but you're going to get that. And Leah is such a smart person that I know she understood the game. So I'm really interested to see where that court case in particular goes. We'll go over some of the court documents on Friday. Uh, but I just wanted to uh, talk about that because I think sometimes, you know, my way to handle anything is humor. And by that, I mean, bad humor, but I, I did a, a joke on uh, Instagram saying, Oh, I forgot to pay my auto registration must blame Andy Cohen. And, you know, I think most people got that joke, uh, but I think some people were offended and considered that victim blaming. And I, I, I understand how that maybe potentially could come off like that, but that's why I do want to explain uh, my thinking sometimes, you know, it's just sometimes is that there is a certain responsibility that we all sign up for on this planet. And some of us aren't good with that. And the people that aren't good with that 
Maybe that's a clear sign to stay as far away from reality television as humanly possible. Why throw that roadblock into everything? I don't care how much money they're offering you. I don't care if you think it's going to be good for your products. If it's going to be good for Mary to the mob clothing. Like, I don't care. Like, just get away. Get away as fast as you can. But if not, there is this thing where it does call into play. Well, are you looking for a payout? What are you looking for exactly? You know, are you looking for better, better mental health conditions or, you know, at the end of the day, you have to realize you are signing up for making a television show and all the good and bad that comes with that. And at the point of Ultimate Girls Trip, which Leah talks about, she had known how these things work, you know, for multiple seasons. Um, And yeah, there is a big conversation to be had about Andy Cohen partying with any of these people. It's hard to be the king, right? It's hard to be the king. It's hard to be the queen. It's hard to be that person that everybody uh, feels like they need to look up to. And I think a lot of these people actually genuinely do look up to Andy Cohen. But I think that's actually a conversation you can have as well. Um, But it is interesting when somebody is bringing up situations that they weren't there and participating in, and then it becomes a hearsay kind of thing. So I don't know. Those are just some initial thoughts I've been thinking about all day, uh, obviously. And I really do try to think these things out. I really do like to read other people's opinions and things, but I do think we are a highly litigious society. We will sue over anything and everything. And some of those things, I just don't think deserve lawsuits. I do think some people just are looking for money. And I'm not saying that's Leah, but I've seen it happen many, many times. You've seen it happen many, many times. And just just to really even make you even mad, even more mad potentially, is that like I was thinking about Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. And I was thinking, oh, these people really do not belong together when reading all of these things. I also thought Johnny Depp does not seem like a great guy in that relationship. I also had high empathy for Amber Heard, and I saw the amount of hate that she received. Um, But it's really interesting, and I'm curious where this is all going to head, You know, where this is all going to lead to, and at the end of the day, is it going to lead to something that's actually overall good for these shows that we show up for, the audience, every week? Is it going to be good for that? And also Vanderpump Rules is a great example. You know, these producers, it does not seem like they're in Tahoe going, hey, James, are you mad at what Tom said? Hey, would you like a little blow? Hey, you know what? You know, it gets uh, my anger out doing a bunch of lines of cocaine. No, they're letting all of these people not drink. The Heineken Zero is flowing freely on Vanderpump Rules right now. Like I'm the, I'm the bastard going, please drink, please drink, please drink. These producers don't seem to be pushing shit. I don't know. That's anyways. Anyways. Okay. Okay. So yesterday was a big day for me, uh, old Ryan Bailey. And, uh, because I got to go do Jeff Lewis, uh, extended, which is the after show after Jeff Lewis live at Sirius. I always love doing that, but it was a crazy episode. You guys, if you don't have Sirius, because he had Adrian Maloof and Doug Buden in studio, Adrian Maloof, real housewives of Beverly Hills legend. Uh, so I got to meet her, which is wild. And uh, then in the after show, me and Justin Martindale were doing the after show and the the extended. And and what we do is we take listener calls. We talk about what Jeff talked about on the show. It's really easy. I love all the all the chumps seem like really cool. They call the chumps is Jeff's audience. And everybody's been so fucking nice. Sorry to use the language, kids. Um, Everybody's been so great. And some of those people have even listened to this podcast. I'm sure some of those people like, what the hell is this guy doing? Like, I know it's a little crazy, guys, but thank you for being here if you're a chump. So 20 minutes into the show, you know, Jeff is talking about more of his like legal case with his ex about his child, you know, all this stuff. So I'm like, okay, we got a lot of stuff to talk about already. And then the fire alarm goes off. And Jameson, who's one of the producers on the show, he's like, hey, don't worry. This happens all the time. You can, uh, you know, it's going to stop in a second. It's like probably a fire drill or something. And me and Justin are in the green room. And then Alyssa, who also works in the uh, unserious, she's awesome. Uh, this guy comes by, he's like, Hey, no, really, you guys got to get out, man. You got to get out now, dude. Like it's, it's time to go. And it turns out there actually was 
I believe a car maybe caught on fire. Or there was smoke over on the fourth floor. We're on the eighth floor. All of a sudden, this becomes like the Titanic. This is like the Chump Inferno 2024. Like we're walking down the hallway, and all of a sudden, I'm following. I'm right behind Adrian Malouf, having to walk down eight flights of stairs. And I gotta tell you, Adrian taking her time. Like, I'm like, Oh my God, am I going to potentially die? Because Adrian Malouf can't like pick the pace up. I did not really actually feel that way, but it was really funny because they're having to evacuate the entire building. And then we go out on this on the street in Hollywood. And I'm like, okay, so like, are we done for the day? Um, I got to go to another thing right after this. And Justin's like, yeah, do we just leave? And then Alyssa and Jameson who, you know, produce, they're like, Hey, do you have Zoom on your phones? We're going to go live from the parking lot. I'm like, wait, what? And Doug Buden, like Jeff, just Jeff and Shane, who, uh, you know, they're, they're hosting the the hour. They're like, you know what? It's We, we got to get to the court thing anyways. So Doug takes over and all of a sudden we're broadcasting live from a parking lot. Very glamorous away from a construct, like right across from a construction site where they're like making cement. And we had to stand like 15 feet away from each other because the feedback was so intense. Like I could bear, like you would say something and then it would go over to Doug, like, you know, two seconds after you said it. So you would hear it bounce back on you. And Doug, uh, so amazing, great captain of that ship, but it was very funny. And then finally, uh, fireman got there. It was all clear. And we were able to go back into the studio for the actual hour. But I got to tell you, it was so exciting. That's what I love about radio. It reminded me of growing up, listening to Stern and how they would just kind of make everything part of the show. And that's what I genuinely love about being there. It, it does. The more I'm there, it is really fun. You know, I love radio, but also I love that whole gang of people, like all the people that I co-host with. I love taking the calls. Um, it's just the funnest thing. And it reminded me of high school when every day, uh, you know, like I would do the assemblies and I would host those or I would do the morning. And I would, guys, I was a real fucking nerd. Let's just, I'm, I still am. I'm more comfortable with it now. That's actually not true. But I was just a huge nerd. But each day, I was like, man, you would do so much during a day in high school. I'd be rehearsing for plays or musicals. I would be doing like sketches during lunch. I mean, just everything. And that's what that kind of vibe is like. And it was so exciting to be a part of that and to have callers call in and listen to their stories. I, I can't say enough good things about my experience over there so far. Um but then I had to get out of there because I got to be a guest on uh, Spencer Pratt and Heidi Montag's podcast that's exclusively over on Spotify for The Ringer. It's called Spidey's 16th Minute. And uh, I was their guest and the Spotify studio is downtown. So I had to get over there, got there. But their studio is so beautiful in the Spotify offices. Um, and I got to be their guest. And I got to tell you, it was so, you know, guys. I never thought I would be doing anything like this, like anything like this with my life at all. Um, so this has just been a real treat. Like I'm not rich, not even close. <laughs> I'm driving my beat up Toyota Corolla and I'm, I'm fine. Totally fine with that. But what I do get paid in is experiences like those because I was a, you know, a, the Hills watch Laguna beach. I, I watch those shows day and date. And you know, I've had Spencer on this show a couple of years ago, and that was a huge moment when he agreed to do the show. Oh man, I was so, I was so green back then. I still am green, but I was, I, I remember just, man, that was so wild. And he was nice enough to do it. Uh, and it was, you know, over Zoom back then. So to get to see them and be with them in person and to watch their dynamic, Heidi and Spencer's dynamic, like Heidi is actually, I, I really w walked away impressed by Heidi and just their dynamic, how you can tell it is such a real relationship. But we had a really interesting conversation about reality television, about like Jax Taylor, Vanderpump Rules, The Bachelor franchise, The Hills. I mean, all of their information. And I do love Spencer's takes on things. I think he's been around this business and this is a man who was staging pap paparazzi photos when some of you guys were just babies. I mean, this guy has been around the block, but also what I love about Spencer, and I made that point, and Heidi, is that, yeah, they wanted reality television fame. They wanted the money to keep coming in, but they didn't, like, sue over it. You know what I'm saying? Like, Spencer took his love for crystals, which people made fun of, and started his own crystal company, like Pratt Daddy Crystals. You know, he started this whole company like they actually said, OK, we like to do these other things. And then anything that comes from that is sometimes it's extra. 
I mean, we all watch Spencer uh, with the Hummingbirds, the Enya, the Taylor Swift fandom. Like he's kind of made his own lane and Heidi as well. But it was a real thrill. So go check that out. Leave a nice comment if, uh, you, you know, always reach out to Spencer Heidi and say, say you liked it if you liked it. Um, but uh, I, w- I was I was really tickled to to be over there. It just I had to pinch myself because you know my buddies Nick and Jessica, their brother and sister, we used to text about the hills all the time, and to send them a picture afterwards. And I even mentioned them on the podcast. But send them, like, look look who I was just with. Look who I was just with. And you know those are the little treats. Like I don't want to be friends with any of these people. I want to be friendly, but it's just really exciting for me to do these things. Because like I said, didn't plan on any of this. So all of these things are like little treasures, you know, you're like, Ooh, I found a little piece of gold. I got to participate in this. That's like, that's gold to me. Um, so I wanted to share that victory with you guys because I wouldn't get these opportunities if I didn't have an audience and, uh, I can, you know, it is very interesting. And as the show gets bigger, I definitely take on, it is interesting to get more hate, which is interesting. Uh, and I can understand it. But it is interesting because I, sometimes I'm like, I don't think they listen to the actual show. Like, I don't think they actually listen to what we talk about here. And uh, it is it, it's very interesting, but it's it's kind of it, it, I don't know. It, it's uh, it's what it is, right? Eh. Anyways, OK, let's get into this Vanderpump Rules recap. If you like this show, uh, consider leaving it five stars on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. I'm asking you to vote twice. I already did the Patreon stuff. We're on YouTube as well. If you want to watch some of these videos live, uh, we've had a fantastic week so far. We had the Brav Bros on. And I'll give those Brav Bros a compliment again. I said this on the podcast with them the other day. When I first talked to them, it was a year ago, maybe like, or, or like uh, during Scandable at some point, and it was a really good conversation. And I've been on their show. But I got to tell you, they, you know, the conversation that we had this past week, I just thought, man, they are getting really good. Like it is, it, you know, I thought they were good, but I, th- I thought it was a fantastic conversation. Can't wait to do it again with those guys. And then we had Dana Omari at IG famous by Dana doing the pop culture roundup. And you can tell I was very excited on that talking a lot. I'm sorry. I was very pumped full of coffee and we did it at 9 a.m. So I was like shot out of a cannon. Um, But yeah, thanks for subscribing, you guys. Thanks for being here. There's always going to be something weird, funny, hopefully a good guest uh, of a show that you should potentially watch. I want to try to be able to do everything. So always consider this a place to uh, stop by and listen and you have a home here. Okay, guess who doesn't have a home? This Tom Sandoval, because he won't get out of that place with Ariana. Uh, what was that uh, cowboy? Was that like, did he see like the Barbie movie? And he was like, that Ryan Gosling as Ken in that cowboy scene, I need, to, I need to really replicate that entire look for Tahoe. Tahoe, I'm opening the sexiest restaurant called Wolf. Do you want a place to masturbate at? Consider Wolf in Lake Tahoe. You will want to fiddle your bean and your pots and your sausage and weenies at Wolf. The place to expose yourself. It's so sexy and serene. And me and Nigga Lane, we just talk about People dipping their balls in cheese fondue. Very sexy. Very classy. What are you talking about, Lisa? I can't believe that. Are you in a jacuzzi with Nick I can't believe that. Um, this obviously is part of the trial of Tom Sandoval. And I don't mean trial because nobody's really actually even asking him specific questions. So it's the trial, past the trial, and now we're on to the redemption. We're like, we're like, hey, you're kind of in purgatory right now. We're going to see if you can get out of it and see how you do around the gang, as they're called. And like I said last week, I'm like, I don't even believe, like a gang. Like, what? why are we acting like this is like goals? Like, oh, man, I wish I had a gang like those fucking Vanderpumpers. No, this is not goals anymore. Like this is, there's been like slim windows where this is goals, you know? Also, we got finally our first look at the Valley. If you thought Vanderpump rules was sexy, just wait until you watch the Valley. We're going to change so many diapers in one hour of TV each week. Your brain's going to blow out of the side of your head. The Valley. Listen, we are all so hyped to hate on this show. Because that's what we do now. We hate something before we like it. So I am going to do that crazy weird thing where I'm not going to hate it yet. 
I'm going to say, Hey, the Valley, what do you got? What do you got to show me? Like it, by the way, did the trailer just come out today or yesterday? Like days, days just blend. Like it's so sad now. I just judge days by like Instagram. Like when did that come out on Instagram, that trailer? I don't know. I, I want to see what it is. It, like there's new characters, obviously, but you got the Jax, the Brittany, the Janet, um, the Jason. We're going to probably have some cameos from Sheena and Larder. And we'll see what it's about. Like, listen, I never thought, I mean, I liked movies like Mr. Mom and Parenthood back in the day, but I never thought, ah, man, I, you know what? I love Jax Taylor when he's potentially on a Coke rage, but I'd love to see how he changes a diaper. I'll tell you that much. Now that would be good TV. Give me the popcorn. I want to see this guy change a diaper. Like, no, I've never been like that, but. You got to see like this guy, Jax, for whatever, like he does tend to, you know, jacks it up. And by jacks it up, I usually mean mess it up. And there's a good chance that we're going to see him push so hard to make this show a success that he potentially is going to screw up his very real life. Or we're going to see him like explode on camera. Unless the other thing that could be funny too, is what the preview kind of presents it as. He's kind of like the leader of this crazy gang. He's known these guys for a little bit and he's kind of like the leader. And I think that's kind of funny too, of looking to Jax Taylor to be the leader. Like, hey, that guy that ripped off his chunky sweater in a Las Vegas parking lot in August. Yeah, let's make him the leader of something. That sounds great. Sounds like he's fully good to go. Like, I don't know. I don't know what it's like. I'm expecting I probably will get a advanced copy. Oh, my God, you guys. I'm saving this for like when I'm really down to cheer me up. Guess what I got yesterday? I got a screener of Erica Jane Bennett all on blonde Erica Jane's two hour documentary about her Las Vegas show of Mikey Minden going five, six, seven, eight. You're not popping enough. You're not popping enough. I have that in my email right now. And it is taking everything in my power to not shut everybody, everything out of my life and just watch it. But I want to earn it. I want to earn that viewing experience. Cause even though I have strong experience, uh, strong, um, strong opinions about Erica Jane. And if you watch that housewife and the hustler part two, you know, and what she did to the costumers in that, which by the way, there was, uh, you know, that case is going forward. So there's another thing that is not looking good for Erica Jane away from all of the Girardi shit. But I think it is going to be an insanely fun viewing experience because like I always said, I love when people take themselves so seriously, even the sacrosanct nature of Tom Sandoval playing Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, a victim in this season. Like he's playing. So, he's like, oh, man, how do I play a martyr? Like, and I don't even think it's plain. I think he truly believes he is a martyr. He himself is a victim of Scandaval, even though he is the one that created Scandaval, which is kind of, if you think about it, kind of like Oppenheimer, like Robert Oppenheimer <laughs> created Duval, like, but he's also a victim of it. And that is Tom Sandoval. In fact, Meditza, we need to make that meme of Oppenheimer, but it's Sandoval and it just has the Oppenheimer letter. It just says Sandoval. He created the bomb that created. Like, I feel like Sandoval does not realize that. Like, I think he thinks he's a victim just like the rest of them and not the person that created this entire thing. And it is a very interesting season to watch because you can tell they counted on Raquel, the uh, Rachel, the artist formerly known as Raquel, to come back at some time. And that doesn't happen. And you can tell they're scrambling at some point. Like Lisa's like, should we throw a dog at TJ James Kennedy? I've got I've got graham cracker. Can we do that? Uh, can can we use that as bait for Rachel? Well, maybe put graham cracker on a leash and get Rachel to come back to Tahoe. And then you have Ariana and Katie, by the way, I'm really subtly digging Katie's just absolute disdain for being <laughs> disdain for being there. Last week, she said she'd rather eat denim, which I'm still thinking about. of just like a nice soft plate of denim, uh, like a chili con carne denim, like so many different ways to go about eating that. But then this week, I just love that they're like, fuck, no, I'm not going to Tahoe. If I wanted to go share a space with my ex-boyfriend, Tom Sandoval, I would just stay at the house that we still share together. Like, 
Like now we're traveling together. Like, of course, of course they wouldn't want to be there. But the interesting thing that happens in this, and I imagine as producers, this was a potential conversation, not exciting, but like, oh, we can go somewhere with this. Of course, this is this chess piece of the way to get Sandoval back in. You don't want Ariana and Katie there because they would, they would rain on that parade, right? Because Ariana, the face of Ariana would be like, Hey guys. Yeah. Remember me? Yeah. I'm the guy, uh, the one that found the the phone of uh, Rachel fiddling with herself a year ago. Um, by the way, the year anniversary is on Friday. So think about what you're getting me. Um, th that's how this all started. And to have Ariana and Katie there, I think would be this constant reminder of like, the fuck? What the fuck are you guys doing? We're not meant to be friends together anymore. We're not meant to be friends for the rest of our lives. I mean, by the way, it almost <laughs> feel like sometimes this season, I'm like, are we about to get like Max Eric again? The old manager at Tom Tom that got fired. And uh, the other dude that did the music video was Sheena. Like, are we going to start bringing in like, hey, remember me? Like, oh my God, wouldn't it be amazing if we just started getting oh, faces of yesteryear? Just, I mean, wouldn't that be kind of incredible? Like I... I've had enough Billy Lee for the next couple of seasons. Wouldn't mind seeing more of Kyle Chan. He seems to make sense. Billy Lee seems like a fangirl at this point, which is kind of funny, but uh, we've seen it. Um, but wouldn't it be great if Laura Lee pops up at some point? Like they're in Tahoe and she's like, like has a gambling addiction or something, you know, I mean, something like those are the kind of like, or faith coming back or, you know, I'm just trying to think of the possibilities of, where we could potentially go. Cause if we're going to go down, let's go down in style. Like if we're going to like, if this show is going to tank, let's tank it in style. The thing that I think we will never see, you will never see that moment of Ariana forgiving Tom. And if you, that moment does happen, it's not going to be on camera because Ariana is doing that thing, protecting herself. And I want to point out why is it the women of Vanderpump rules usually are looking to actually protect themselves way more than, than the men. And don't give me that damn excuse of, well, the men care about making good TV. Well, that's dumb. That's dumb. These aren't fucking like, I mean, like Tom and Sh Schwartz and Sandoval aren't like the Warner brothers. Like they're Schwartz and Sandoval. I think they legitimately make poor choices and those are fun to watch. But Ariana, like I said, and people are like, oh, you stand up for Ariana too much. Of course I do. Why wouldn't you? But I will tell you, yeah, sometimes it doesn't make good TV, but that's not Ariana's concern. And you can tell that. But it is interesting because Sandoval is now getting one-on-ones with people, being able to tell some things that he's, you know, sorry, even though he bitches behind their backs completely. The thing that he gets upset that they do about him, he does that all the time. So he's going to pull those people. And you're going to see next week, Sheena going like, I can't hate Tom anymore just for you. And I'm like, well, you could. Yeah, I mean, you could, you know, maybe like a couple weeks more, I think. And Sheena, of course, like Sheena is a big heart. And I know that's it. like Sheena feels very deeply. And like I said, multiple episodes, if you are in Sheena's face, she's most likely to forgive you. She will take you at face value. And then I think later she thinks about those decisions. And Lala, I mean, I think Lala went on our podcast this week and goes, hey, I never really had a relationship with Tom Sandoval before. So I'm not looking to repeat pair anything but like yeah I don't, it's very interesting where all of these people come at it the person that you like i mean the number one victim watching this and what i'm realizing week in week out it turns out it's dj james kennedy the ultimate betrayal tom the ultimate and if you don't understand like i was like holy shit i mean like it turns out dj james kennedy loves tom sandoval more than any of these women combined and you almost feel bad for him until you realize that Tom cheated on Ariana and not DJ James Kennedy. So that final scene, DJ James Kennedy spitting out pearls of wisdom made so much sense. But at the end of the day, you're like, wait a sec. Um, you're like, you're, you're, you're involved in this, but not to the level that your mind is allowing you to be involved in this. I mean, it's cute because he looks as Tom as like this big brother figure, I guess. But I feel like, I don't know. I don't know. Listen, reality reckoning, like I said last week, let's just have therapists like everywhere. Let's have therapists in Tahoe. Let's have therapists. So after these conversations can uh, happen, then like Bridget, a therapist can take DJ James Kennedy aside of like, do you have any questions about what just happened? Can I, can I explain what I saw a little bit? And then we can talk about feelings like maybe, and that would be a good, like a side little show too of like Bravo therapy. 
you know, with Bridget. Who knows? Let's get into this thing. We're only 35. Hey, let's get into this thing. We're running a tight ship here. This is episode five. Next week is the season finale. JK, but wouldn't that kind of be cool? I don't know where they just ended the season. Uh, this is called Lake It or Break It. Hell yeah, it is, brother. Lake it or break it. I get it because Tahoe is around that, the water at the lake. And this is the uh, description the cable company gives us. A chat between James and Sandoval threatens to rock the fragile piece the group had just formed. That's what the, the that's what you got out of the whole thing was the the conversation is threatening to rock the peaceful environment. I I'm sorry if Tom Sandoval has a sledgehammer slamming walls and yelling weird things. I don't think I that should be the description. Tom Sandoval picks up a sledgehammer and uh, people get worried. Like that should be the description of this episode. Not not fucking the anyways. Also, um, I have another like a an AKA title. Like if you didn't want to go with Lake It or Break It, I would go with uh, uh, Lake Tablo. Like, you know, like, oh, it blows Lake Tablos. You know what? Let's go with Lake It or Break It. I, and now that I'm reading that out loud, I think that's the way to go. So as always, these shows start with previously on Vanderpump Rules. And we have a collection of scenes from the last four episodes where we ended last week where Lisa Vanderpump was like, DJ James Kennedy, come to Vanderpump Dogs is another business I own and advertise. But at the same time, I'm going to bring out your dog, Graham, and give him back to you. And he cries. We saw that emotional moment, which also, I listen, I, I hate to be conspiratorial, but the longer I do this, the more it happens. Is this Graham? Let's just say it. Is it? Can we get some DNA testing? Like, I'm willing to pitch in. We do a GoFundMe. I just want to make sure because I would just, like, Lisa does potentially seem like that person that would, like, spray paint a dog to make it look more like, I hate to say that. It's just it's like a businesswoman. Um, there is some doubts in my mind. Then we have that scene uh, with Sheena where she's talking to Brock and her mom about Tori, the nanny. And remember, Tori is the girl that eventually has that subplot with Schwartz and Katie, which I'm very excited to see how that happens now. But Brock is like, I don't know, he's looking at your mom. Your mom shouldn't be around here 20 of our seven. What are you talking about? And then we had that scene from Sandoval's birthday party where DJ James Kennedy is like, I'm so disappointed in you, Tom. It was the ultimate betrayal. You haven't seemed like you've grown up at all. And then that scene when they were at uh, Sir, where uh, Schwartz is talking to the gang of like, I'd like to get us all together to go to Tahoe and bring back the good vibes. And Ariana saying like, listen, I've given up on you a long time ago, Schwartz. And then Sheena talking to Sandoval in the Sir alleyway talking about things. We had that iconic scene. I also want to point out, we still do not have Peter Madrigal, the manager of Sir. I almost feel like it's a curse and it is. this is the dark cloud hanging over the season. We need that man's ponytail to just whip around. It's a, you can't invite the man to Tahoe? He can't bring out some celebratory shots like he used to do at the end of the reunions to Tahoe of like, hey guys, I heard somebody called for some pump teenies. And then I think the audience would be like, Peter, Peter. And then they kick him right out again. That's all we need. Just a little glimpse, just for good luck. And then, of course, uh, Sheena talking to Lisa when Lisa's like, oh, we can't be responsible for what happens for Tom. You've got to kiss his ass a little bit. And Sheena going, well, he is leaning into villain energy, Lisa. And I don't like it. I don't like it. Then, of course, we have the opening um, still we're not getting something about her anytime soon. And if you watch the after show this week on Peacock, they even talk more about the issues going on with something about her. And it does make it like, why the fuck would anybody want to open a business anymore? It just seems like a pain in the ass. So anyways, we do like we always do with the round robin scenes. Like we open, it's LA, it's bright and shiny. We see somebody walking a dog and the song's like, every day I'm gonna play. I just want to take you on an escapade. And we go over to Marina Del Rey and this summer moon is getting like uh, a bottle and she is just crying because she still realizes Tom Sandoval has her blocked on Instagram. Uh, it's very dramatic. She's just really not gotten over it. Then we keep with the music. What I do, nothing feels like I feel when I'm close to you. And we're at Lala's apartment. And Lala, this is how, like, what are we doing? Lala literally just tucks her dog in and then puts some shoes away and wipes a counter. And that's it. And now 
That's it. That's what we're doing. That's content now. Now we go over to Katie and Ariana getting in Katie's Audi. And Katie's like, does it smell like weed in here? Because I think Katie might be a little little Cheech and Chong. She might be both of them. Who knows? Now we keep going. Another day. I'm blown away. Want to take you on an escapade. We're seeing palm trees. And Tom and Tom, uh, Tom and Tom are walking down the street. They're going into a store. And Sandoval's like, I've never been in the store, dude. I've heard good things, though. And Schwartz's like, yeah, I've, I've, I've never been here either, Tom. So they're doing what guys do best, shopping. And they go, <laughs> they go into this place called Hatchet Outdoor Supply. Schwartz lets us know that he's in his Adam Sandler era. Dude, I've been in that era now for like a decade. I had to wear a suit yesterday. Felt good, but nothing like my Adam Sandler clothes. We go over to DJ James Kennedy after they walked in the store and DJ James Kennedy's like, it's crazy because he has Graham. It's crazy. I have you in my very expensive ride, Graham. Graham Cracker. This is crazy. This is wild. Oh, you're in my car, Graham Cracker. I'm going so fast. And then he's like, Graham is my favorite boy. Graham is my favorite boy. You're living the high life now, Graham. Daddy bought a house. And they're talking to that. He's like, I never thought I'd be with Graham again. I left that dream a long time ago and I've had to just erase him from my mind. And we do a flashback of Graham moments. I was always the one taking care of him, the best dad, undeniable bond, unbreakable, unbreakable. So we see them through the years. The fact that he's now here, somehow the universe just, and he's, he's like, you're back. You're back with who you're meant to be with, Graham Cracker. In the car, he's like, I love you. I've missed you so much. You're going to meet Ali Bally. Ali and I have discussed a dog. Uh, we see the flashback earlier in the season where he's like, this is such a perfect walk, such good for a dog. I want a dog again. And Ali's like, well, if you do your chores, we'll consider it. And he's like, and listen, I don't know how she's going to react, Ali Bally, when I bring in my ex's fucking dog, you know? Guess we just got to deal with that, you know? I like that there's a little bit of a, I'm a man. She's just going to have to deal with it. Right, Ali Bali? Also, I was so excited because the first episode of the season, when we saw him, I thought he was saying Ali Bali. And then I was like, no, he's saying Ali Valley because they live in the valley. But tonight it is confirmed he actually is saying Ali Bali. B-A-L-L-Y. I don't know why that excites me as much as it does, but I was like, hell yeah. It's the little wins in life, folks. It's not the big one. It's like, lit, lit, I'll go to bed at night. I go, I was right about that, Ali Bally. I was really, I love that. Anyways, he's like, are you nervous to meet your new mama, Graham Cracker? Are you nervous? Which is so much pressure to put on a dog. A little orphan Annie. Are you ready to meet your new family? Please. Also, I do want to point out, I don't want to rain on everybody's parade here, but uh rachel's podcast rachel goes R -r 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 rogue uh she does in the first episode talks all about how this dog came to be in lisa vanderbump's possession and also does not say very kind things about dj james kennedy's dog caring skills so it is interesting for dj james kennedy to be like i was the best dog dad i did everything I do already, this dog has seen so much. And by so much, I mean Tom Sandoval's wiener. Um, so this dog is hurting more than anybody on this cast, probably. Like, just imagine, first off, the conversations he had here between Sandoval and Raquel. I'm like, oh my God, do you like Fallout Boy? They're the best. Yeah, I like them. Do you want to take your clothes off? Like, <laughs> you know, sorry, sorry. Anyways, so I, I think... I don't know you guys. So it's interesting how there's two sides to every story, but if you want to hear that side, go over to Raquel's podcast. And I do want to say I, uh, Vanderpod recaps, uh, an Instagram account that I shout out a lot of times on here because I don't have time, nor do I want to listen to all of the Vanderpumpers podcasts. I do not. If you listen to the show regularly, I do not listen to reality show podcasts unless they come on my show. And then I listen, you know, to out of respect to see what they're doing and they're coming on. Um, so I always love when somebody's like, Oh, you're copying this person. I'm like, what are you, t I don't even listen to Like I respect, I don't, I, I feel like I'm doing my own, uh, line of bullshit over here, but he does Vanderpod recaps, recaps, like all the good shit. So go give her a follow on Instagram. But I was listening. I think I was reading her recap of Rachel goes rogue. 
And she was talking about the New York Times article with Tom Sandoval last week. And I got to tell you, I think, and this isn't, I'm not trying to, I think there's a chance she might have listened to my podcast last week on uh, the Sandoval New York Times article that I did, because there were certain things that I was reading that I was like, oh, I, that's exactly what I said. Now, like, listen, it's linear thinking. And also I think there's a certain way to think about it that a lot of people thought about, but it was very interesting. I was like, is there a chance? Who knows? Who cares? Uh, I also want to point out, I told you this on Friday's episode, if you listened, but my sources told me that Tom Sandoval was supposed to be on Watch What Happens Live last night after last night's episode, um, but that New York Times article came out. And instead, we had Paige DeSorbo and Michelle Collins, which actually was a really entertaining episode. Man, Michelle Collins is a dream guest. If anybody knows Michelle Collins, to tell her to come on so bad it's good. Uh, what, uh, what a legend. Um, but I thought it was great. But he was supposed to go. They called that off. So you heard it here first. I don't think anybody's actually picked that up yet. Um, so yeah, anyways, Rachel, I think her story is really fascinating. Um, if you're not enjoying this season of Vanderpump, maybe consider that's where all these other podcasts come in to give you a fuller 360 view of everything that you're seeing. And I think Rachel's story, even though, like I always say, I'm not a Rachel fan, I am a fan of somebody looking into their own behavior, actually doing what is right for them. And then coming back to the real world, even though at the end of the day, I still think she should have stayed away from any kind of notoriety for at least a year, but that's her life. Um, but it's apples and oranges from what Tom Sandoval is doing. And I think that's why Tom Sandoval continues to get himself into hot water. Also, Maritza, um, who works with me, pointed out today that Tom's podcast has not come out this week yet. And I think there is a real, um, I think there's a real chance that we won't hear that podcast for a minute. Could be wrong, but I think maybe he's finally listening that he is not in the place to actually talk. And that's like I said, from the beginning, this dude shouldn't have had a podcast because he's not the best communicator. That's not what everybody loved him for anyways. They, they, you know, this guy made other people feel good, but it wasn't about like these long drawn out conversations. He wasn't going to be good at that. So, and it turns out when he does talk a long time, he gets himself in trouble time and time again. So like Vanderpump rules, it's edited down almost and it still doesn't make him look great, but it makes him look passable and acceptable, these episodes. But when he is able to just like, you know, like you know, free, free associate, you know, like it gets, he gets into a lot of trouble because you see the way he views things is so off kilter. It is so off kilter from the actual situation, his own experience. He still hasn't been able to actually put into words. And so all you're hearing is just anger. All you're hearing is that anger. And I get that. But if you are that angry, now is not the time to be using your voice. There will be time for that, right? Anyways, back to DJ James Kennedy. He's going to introduce Graham to his new forever home. You're going to meet your mama. You are. But we cut away from that. We know that's coming up. We're back in the uh, car with uh, Ariana and Katie. And I guess we got a call from Penny who works with them at something about her. And I guess there's a lot of stuff going on with the code stuff, but there's also poopy stuff happening. Um, somebody pooped on the patio of something about her. And I don't think we need to take bets on who it was. Like here, here are the culprits. Here's who I thought. I think, you know, Billy Lee did it as tribute, like I'll volunteer as tribute. And then Billy Lee just like, ah, or I think Sandoval pooped on the something about her patio, but Billy Lee sat there looking like he was an angel, like him coming out of the cold plunge, like, oh my God, Tom, you're doing it. How intense is that poop? It's pretty intense, dude. Like out of one to 10, it's like, it's like an eight. Oh my God, Tom, you're doing it. You're pooping on the patio of something about her. <laughs> you know, like, hi, by the way, shut down the entire rest of the season. Fuck Scandaval. I want the rest of the season to be a fucking knives out murder mystery, but just about who pooped on something about her's patio. At one point I questioned myself. I was like, did I do it? And I was like, no, I don't think there's any way that I would have done it. But like the culprit, it could be so many people. Like it could be Schwartz of like, oh, I just feel bad for my friend Sandoval. At the end of the day, I'm not going to throw away this friendship. So I am going to shit on something about her patio. Also, we're assuming maybe it's our, like because of Ariana. This could be a Katie issue. This could be Schwartz getting back at Katie for something of like, you didn't come on the Tahoe trip. I now must shit on something about her patio. 
It could be Lisa Vanderpump. These girls are not forgiving Sandoval enough, and now I will poop. Ah, nigga Lane, nigga Lane. Or Ken, like, did you realize I pooped on this only girl on this patio? Can't believe I did that. I can't believe it. <laughs> 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 this is so stupid. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> Billy Lee's bright shining face as Sandoval takes a dookie. You ever heard of a Cleveland themer? <laughs> <laughs> DJ Dan Kennedy pissed on my bushes. Now I'm going to shit on something about her. Can you imagine? They get the video. Vanderpump Rules gets the video. It's Sandoval dressed as a ninja. And he has that sword he got from Jack signed by Randy Jackson. It was directly after the night. He had that scene with Sheena in the Sir Alley. <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel, it's my birthday. Call me back. I just shit on the patio. Something about her. Thinking about you. I love you so much. Call me back. <laughs> Call me back. <laughs> Call me back. <laughs> or Peter is like, why, why am I not in this season? I must take a Cleveland steamer on the something about her patio. Oh, you guys. I kid. I kid. Yeah. No, I am not. I'm not happy right now. Why would I be? Anyways, so we have a lot of issues going on. They're also talking about not going to Tahoe because Katie does have to organize her sock drawer. And I'm like, that is, that's noble. Why would you go? It totally makes sense. But anyways, there's a lot of like, they have to do a ramp. So it's a a, uh, applying a compliance, but in the after show, they go more into the, uh, the details of this, was that they bought this ready to go. It used to be a like little restaurant, so it was supposed to already be signed off on. But then when the city of West Hollywood came in, they didn't sign off on it. They were like, oh, you added this, you added this, but they didn't add that. But then it takes all like long for them to come back, I guess. It just seems insane. But they're also talking about taking the water glasses from Pump, which is closed, and potentially using them at something about her. And that was another thing. If you're going to fake reality shows, let's do a fake scene where they do go in and steal like silverware from pump. Um, Anyways, Katie's talking about Tom Schwartz bringing everybody together, but this guy never organizes anything. And he's just such a people pleaser that he doesn't want to leave anybody out. That's why he's invited everybody. But Katie asks, what happens if they all come back besties? And Ariana goes, that would be tough, but I do have to respect my own boundaries. And I'm not going to be loyal to people that don't reciprocate that. Once again, I want to point that out. Here is somebody laying down their boundary. This is what everybody tells you to do in therapy. This is what I've not done for 40 years, 40 plus years is lay down boundaries. And I fuck it up every time because I don't lay down boundaries. This is somebody laying down a boundary. And then the audience shits on her for it because it's not fun. I'm like, boo, boo, fuck you, Ariana. It's like, wait. She should be laying down these boundaries. This is something that was done to her. Trying to chase your bliss, trying to move on. The show is potentially not letting you. So you do have to set boundaries. Like, why are we not celebrating this? And I have a feeling we're not celebrating this because it's not fun television to watch. And this is why I always say there's a world in which this could be Ariana's last season. Not because she'd be asked to leave, but because she would make that decision for herself, right? She's going to be doing other things. Why does she need to put herself in harm's way episode at? after episode anyways dj james kennedy he's like hello i have a little surprise and ali's like oh is that graham shut the fuck up yeah it is and she's like oh my god hi what he's a rescue now ali bally apparently it was a faucet thing it's just a pain in the ass he wasn't well behaved it wasn't good ali bally he's doing extra ali ballys to try to you know really butter up And then Mr. Banks, the cat comes out and she's like, Mr. Banks has never met a dog before. And you can tell like, you can tell like it's already, it's like saving Mr. Banks, but like Graham sees Mr. Banks and it's like, (laughs) yeah, Graham is fully, he's just like, fuck you, Mr. Banks. 
My name is Graham. You live in my world now. I just watched my mom, Rachel, do the hippity dippity with Tom Sandoval way too long. That dude had a weird looking mustache and I had to be sent away. Are you kidding me? This is my house now. Fuck you, Mr. Banks. Um, so that's where we're at with, with that, which I love. Thank you. I did pull that sound effect. Uh, I hope everybody appreciates that. Anyways, now he's like, I, I don't know if I'm ready to have the responsibility of a dog. I love cats and they're easy. They're independent dogs. When you Like they say, when you have a kid, your life changes. Graham, this is your new backyard forever. He's already using words like forever when Allie's like, I don't know. He pees, imme Graham pees immediately. And he's like, don't be peeing everywhere. Not like me on Tom Sandoval's bushes. The ultimate betrayal. Guys, night. Anyways, DJ James Kennedy's like, uh, listen, uh, it doesn't belong with Ra Raquel. We don't have to give him back. We don't. And Allie in a talking head's like, listen, we've had a deal with her so much last year. But now she's gone and now her dog's here. I can't get rid of this girl. She's everywhere, which I think Allie makes the most sense out of this entire cast. Now, Graham freaks out at Mr. Banks all over again through the screen. <laughs> I'm going to fuck you. Damn. He doesn't hold on. He just nips, DJ James Kennedy says. And Allie's like, that, that can't happen. No, no, it's not going to happen. I just want to let you know. He did kill Peter Madrigal. He snipped, but he, then he wouldn't let go of that ponytail. And he, oh, he unfortunately is passed, and that's why we don't see him. So anyways, Graham's got his forever home, potentially. And now we zoom over. We are now back into Hatchet Outdoor Supply. And George is like, oh, my God, these are made for Tahoe. And they look like, like hippie MC Hammer pants. And George is like, are you going to get some more stuff? And Tom's like, I'm kind of vibing with this hat, dude. But it's like $500, I think. I don't know. No, it's Schwartz's clothes that are $500. Like, we shouldn't be spending this kind of money on, like, little pants. And anyways, Schwartz is like, oh, my God. Ding. Like, they do this fake ding on his phone. They do this fake, like, ding. Yeah, they put this fake ding on his phone. And Schwartz picks it up. And he's like, oh, my God, dude, breaking news. Did you hear um, Raquel's going to change back to her birth name, Rachel? Did you hear about Did Did you hear about that, dude? And Sandoval's like, Dude, I did hear about that, dude, but it wasn't my place to tell that, you know? Like, I like that he's, like, all noble, and I'm like, didn't, like, once again, didn't you, like, film her diddling herself, like, without her knowledge? Like, don't act like you're, like, all of a sudden, like, yeah, um, that's a big thing, like, telling you about the name change from Raquel to Rachel, and I was just waiting for her to press release it before. <laughs> so, anyway, Schwartz is like, I, I can't believe this is, like, front page news, but I guess it apparently it is. And then he gets another ding. And he's like, out of mental health facility, astronomical bill. And Santa was like, I knew she was out, dude. You did? Yeah. I went to um, send her a, a text message. Yeah. And instead of it coming up green, it went through blue, dude. That means her phone was turned back on. He's like, okay. I said, hey, I don't know if you're out yet, but I just wanted you to know I'm thinking of you and I hope you're doing okay. So that's the te that is the manipulative text message that Sandoval sent. Now, Sandoval's story is that he is madly in love with Rachel, wants to make it work. Even though this name change happens, Tom does keep calling her Raquel throughout. It's tough, right? I'm still doing it. But I want to point that out as well. Also, I, I, I don't know if Rachel shares this on her podcast, but I would be curious. Because remember, she, I think she said she was only getting her phone once a day. I think maybe her publicist had it at a certain point. I would love to get all of the text messages, like how many times a day Sandoval take, like, where are you, dude? Uh, just had a pretty sweaty workout. What are you doing, dude? Uh, why I'm watching CNN, listening to Van Halen, thinking of you, dude. Uh, I'm going to work out again, having a green screen, thinking of you, dude. Like, I would love to know how many text messages, but this is like a very, what it would be considered a sweet text message, like thinking of you. But if she's not texting him back, I'm just curious how much, like, and did it ever get angry? Like, what the fuck, dude? I threw my life away for you, dude. I need a text back. Take me back. It's my birthday. Billy Lee's sitting here staring at me in a cold plunge. Take me back, dude. Anyways, he's like, I think once I didn't hear from Rachel on my birthday, I started to really think that something was going on, that she was purposely not talking to me. What would lead you to believe that, Tom? Did something happen? Her public is like sending my call through her voicemail. She doesn't want to face the world. And Short's like, I can't blame her, dude. I didn't, uh, you know, 
I didn't want to face the world and I wasn't a part of it. You kind of were, like I said. And he was like, he's like, Tom, this is a good jump off trip, dude. We're going to hike. We're going to take a gondola. We're going to do this cool shit. And then Santa was like, I'm going to bring my cheery, happy energy, dude. And Schwartz is like, listen, who knows what's going to happen? I'm going into the utmost positivity, a great mindset. And Santa was like, yeah, dude, I just want to have some fun, dude. Schwartz in a talking head is like, I'm sticking my neck out here. Like the responsibility falls on me if all thing goes to hell. And Schwartz is like, I've always wanted to jump into Tahoe. Maybe it's like a cleansing. I'm just hoping our little trip is like, like wet hot American summer, dude. And then you're like, oh, that's kind of sweet. Like shorts, you know, it's in the right place. It's in that right area of like, okay, positivity. And you would think Sandoval would be like, totally. I totally get it. Instead, he's like, do you guys have any knives in here? And I'm like, wait, what? Knives? And uh, he's like, oh, no, no, not like, you know, shorts is like, not like the shining, right? And I'm talking head. And then we see Sandoval just playing with knives. We just see him seen playing with knives. It's very eerie considering the situation. And then Schwartz is like, listen, you can have conversations, but you don't have to like do it if you don't want to, but it might be a good opportunity. And then they have a shot of like Sandoval, just like with a fucking ax in his hand. And he's like looking at it. Like, could this cut through Lala? Could like, what could this possibly do? Like, it's very scary. And I, I was just like, maybe we shouldn't, um, you know, maybe we shouldn't be playing with knives and hatchets. <laughs> When we're talking about healing. I mean, that's just a weird rule of thumb that I have. And you can tell Schwartz is even looking at it like, um, is this good? Is this, is this a good idea for me to possibly bring him? Um, yeah, let's put down the knives. Let's anyways. Anyway. So, so we now come up to a scene with Sheena and Brock. Sheena has to pick out a bathing suit for Tahoe. And she's like, this is a big moment too. Cause he's like two piece or one piece, like the eternal question. But Brock comes in and then they start having this conversation and it turns into an argument, you guys, where, you know, Brock once again is like, I just don't want to have your mom around. And we find out that Tori has canceled on babysitting for Tahoe or nannying for Tahoe because she nannies for another family. They just had a baby, so she can't do it. She called off and Brock is like, I don't want one of your friends or your mom. Can't we agree to hire a professional nanny? And Sheena rightfully is saying like, listen, I'm not going to leave my precious baby with just anyone. He's like, yeah, not now, but can't we work up to it? Come on. What are you talking about? And remember, I can't do a Brock imitation. So I just do a little leprechaun. So, uh, you know, Brock keeps going like, she has the mom guilt. She's already leaving summer, but she's staying in the same house as Sandoval, you know? And Sheena is letting us know, yeah, all of this is too much. Like, I'm already, like, we already know her feelings about leaving her child. But now, also the Sandoval of it all, and I do have to point, she did have to go to court for a restraining order because of the Sandoval-Rachel situation. But she's like, these are constant thoughts in my head. And, uh, you know, but Brock kind of keeps pushing of like, why don't you listen to me? Why can't we get a nanny? I don't want to be with your mom for the rest of my life. Come on, just let her be a grandma. She doesn't have to be there every day. And we do that great reality show thing where they have like a, a shot of a shopkeeper or an employee just completely scared. It's kind of like my look when Sandoval was playing with knives. But they, you know, he's like, ah, hey guys, okay, it's a very tiny store. I can hear everything. And Sheena's like, let's not argue here. Let's not argue in front of, and Brock's like, who cares? What are you talking about? We can totally have the conversation here. It's fine. You're paranoid because of your mom. And Sheena, then they walk outside and Sheena's like, it's weird. We're arguing now in the front of the store. He's like, it's not weird. It's just the optics. No, I think it's like, it's across the board. Weird. I, why can't we just, that is kind of weird. And uh, Sheena's like, you make it awkward, Brock. Just stop talking. It's like, I'm not going to stop talking. I've got a point here. Come on. So that is the end of that scene. And it is very interesting. It's a very interesting relationship. And before the scandal at all, the season before that, remember the Brock and Sheena's mom, there was, there was some intensity there. Brock seems like when he gets an idea, he gets really intense about it. And like a lot of men, he thinks his way is the right way. And I think Sheena... Sheena does make sense in how she's going about things. And Sheena has these ways of thinking and she has certain mental health issues, which she's been honest about that. You do have to like, as her partner, I would imagine you do have to accept that you do have to like be a little more patient and let it get to a point where Sheena is comfortable because you want Sheena at the end of the day to be happy. You want that 
to all work out. But Brock just comes in like a little steamroller. He's like, nah, I've told you all along. What are you talking about? I didn't sign up for this. Hey, look at the Irish. You know, it's hard to watch. We then go over to Ali Bally's and DJ James Kennedy's house. And DJ James Kennedy is letting Ali know that it was too late to get Graham uh, to Tahoe. I don't even know why, but I guess they, they need Graham in Tahoe for the scenes. So Graham is flying private like Lala used to do with Randall. And she is in a private jet and we flash over to Lisa's private jet and we see this God, Ken is just an angel. Ken is just like, you know, asleep, dreaming of jacuzzis. And we see Graham on the floor and she's like, have you been on a private jet before, Graham? Oh, uh, I took you up here, but I'm going to need you to just take it easy on Sandoval. You've just got to, Graham. Try to put your personal feelings aside, Graham. Anyways, Allie's like, are you nervous to see Sandoval? And he's like, yeah. And Allie's like, I'm nervous about it because he's going to like shit himself when he sees Graham. Do you think he hung out with Graham a lot? And Allie's like, probably more than we think. And it's like, yeah, Sandoval probably like literally had deep discussions with Graham Cracker. Anyways, we're now at the airport. Uh, DJ James Kennedy is on a little scooter around the airport, uh, you know, TSA be damn. And Sandoval sits down and we see Brock immediately turn around and give him a handshake. And, you know, that's like a big moment. Sheena's with Schwartz going, hey, listen, I didn't get a lot of sleep, but let's have some fun. We see him get on the plane. They're going over to Tahoe. And uh, Schwartz is like, last time I flew into Reno, I was checking out um, a wedding property. And that shows you how dark this show is. Like, yeah, man, Schwartz used to be married. Like, we went to that wedding. It was like a Wednesday wedding. We're now in Lake Tahoe, Nevada. And guess what? We hear Lisa Vanderpump going, oh, uh, Oliver, you're so handsome. And we're seeing like the beautiful lake of Lake Tahoe. And we realize this Lisa Vanderpump is talking to a wolf. She is little, little Jacob from Twilight talking to this wolf. And a photographer is like, here we go. Let's make it sexy. Let's work. And Lisa's doing a photo shoot for her new restaurant, Wolf. And the wolf is like licking Lisa. And we see these photographs of <laughs> and Ken's like, Oliver, Oliver. And we see these very dramatic photos of the wolf and Lisa and then two baby wolves. And Lisa's like, I love you so much. I named a restaurant, uh, you know, uh, over about, I named a restaurant uh, about you. And then Lisa doing her, you know, big Barnum and Bailey's promotional is like, there's nothing uh, chill about my new restaurant and it ain't for the faint hearted that's for sure my god like what is this wolf like it seems like it's like a sledgehammer of a show it's gonna be sexy it's gonna be masculine it's going to be a big bad wolf and you guys then we see a shot of the one and only nick elaine he not only is lisa's partner in design he's also at this photo shoot for some reason we see a shot of nick elaine with the wolf you know, just like, Nicolay, look at you with Oliver the Wolf. It's so sexy and masculine, just like our new restaurant. And all of a sudden we get a FaceTime call and she has those voice prompts on and it's like in a British voice. And it's like, Tom Sandoval is calling. Tom Sandoval is calling. Oh, there's my phone. Um, I've got to answer it. Oh my gosh. Oh, please let it be good news. How guys, well, I've been having so much fun. I'm shooting with wolves and Schwartz and Santa was like, no way, dude. Wow. Tell me life is good with you. And Santa was like, yeah, dude, I went to the airport. I saw them sitting at the bar, just having food, dude. And she was like, Hey, Hey, we're over here, dude. And I was like, Whoa. And Schwartz is like, you can sit with us energy. It was surprising. I was like, hey, how's it going? It was aw very awesome, dude. Keep it going with this kind of energy, please. With hellos and goodbyes. I know. You've got the rest of your lives to get your points across. You know what I'm saying. Let's not attack, okay? Like a big bad wolf. I'll see you tonight. So far, so good, she says, hanging up the phone. And George is like, got a little humanity from the gang. And he's like, Jesus. You haven't had much of that in the last five months. And then he takes off his sunglasses, Sandoval. He's like, no, dude, I haven't. 
and he's crying. And Short's like, you crying, dude? Shit, yeah, let it out, dude. Let, yeah, man. Just to get a hello from people who like are disgusted by your very essence. It's nice, you know? I like Schwartz of like, just to get a hello from people that literally want to fucking shit down your mouth into your eye holes. It's got to be pretty cool, man. I also think there is something very performative in taking off the glasses to show the tears. Like, these are real tears, dude. Look, taking off the wayfarers. Also, that we then cut to a talking head uh, with Tom in his green, um, you know, Zara ladies uh, coat that I think actually looks very good for him. And he's fully crying in this one. And he's like, I um, just remember my... Uh, pauses sorry um where was i just sheena saying hi to me at the airport like that was it just felt like a hint of acceptance oh and listen it's a nice moment obviously right like if we're to believe him that's a nice moment this isn't calculated at all so i imagine but it is funny if you watch the after show and they bring this moment up and sheena lala and james are being interviewed and sheena's like yeah i just literally was like hey what's up <laughs> hey we're over here like sheena was like yeah i didn't it wasn't a moment i was just like hey hey we're over here like it was so funny but sandoval was like it was the moment and schwartz is like are you good dude He's just staring out the window of the lake. So nice. So this is our first little crack in the hardness of Scandaball. We pull into the, the place and DJ James Kennedy's like, Lake Tahoe, woo, woo. And we see the gang pulling up. Remember all the vacation? Remember Jack's being lost in the water of like, you can come and get me if you want. I'm not a strong swimmer. Um, They all divvy up rooms very easily i miss the old days of like the real world and like where like picking the room was like the episode lala's like schwartzy thank you for putting this uh together and little lala's like fuck yeah dude i love it schwartz is like there's an air of peace dare i say from here who knows what's possible like you we bond a little bit over this trip um you know and schwartz actually is being a good friend he's like checking in on sandoval he's like it's really nice to have you here dude the next thing you know, like, we're a family again. It's because of me, this guy, Tom Schwartz. Then we cut to um, Brock and Sheena's room. And Brock is, like, fully in his budgie smuggler uh, with his, like, big caftan robe, which I, this is how weird I am. I'm like, this kind of, like, would work on me. But this guy, like, it's hard to have a conversation with him because he's in his budgie smuggler. And now they're having a fight about laundry because, like, his little budgie smugglers are pink because he washed them with something of summers. And then we have this, like, kind of argument like married couples do where I'm like, wait, what are we doing? Like, let's get this shit over in the Valley show. I don't want to fight about laundry. And Brick's like, maybe the lesson here is, like, you got to do the laundry. You know, you got to let them do the laundry. <laughs> Sheen is like, Brock's not over the nanny argument, but I have started to just... I'm going to put it on the back burner for this trip. But with that being said, I can't help but be annoyed with every single thing that he's doing, which is very married couple. And then Brock leaves and she's like, bikini or one piece, bikini or one piece. And that's what I want to see Sheena doing. I want to see Sheena going bikini or one piece, Bikini, which is by like in terms of Sheena songs, that could be a Sheena song, bikini or one piece. That would be great. Like a summer pop smash hit. Anyways, Brock, gets into the kitchen and Tom Sandoval's there. They're opening up a gift basket to get to the grapes. And Brock's like, Hey, let me tell you something. How are we going to get through this weekend? Uh, you know, uh, you got the friend group and none of them feel heard. Cause, uh, obviously, you know, he's like being, he's like, obviously all you have to do is defend your actions. Right. And Sandoval's like, Brock, dude, I don't, I don't go here, dude. I don't want to go. He's like, yeah, but when you walk into a room, I don't want you to feel like this. Well, you know, dude, it takes a second, dude. But I'm already feeling better, dude. And then Schwartz goes into DJ James Kennedy's room and they're just like, oh, dude, yeah, it's such an awesome. And DJ James Kennedy's like, oh, it's feeling a little weird. Talk to me, dude. Talk to me. Are you, wor are you worried about that dynamic with Sandoval? Yes, I am. And we cut back to Brock. He's like, you put everybody's friendships in a really difficult position. What I did, dude, was horrible. But neither Raquel nor I did that uh, out of any sort of malicious intent, dude. But we felt things were done towards us 
with very specific malicious intent. And DJ James Kennedy comes into the room now. He's like, what's going on, dude? I just want to say, James, thanks for being nice, dude. Appreciate it. Yeah, you know, I want to keep the vibes positive. Um, And yeah, um, I've got to do my hair. I've got to go. I, I, I got to do something in the room real quick. I've got to, um, oh, and DJ James Kennedy can't take it. He's like, it's a little soon for Sandoval to be cordial with me. It's like, we're not fucking cool yet. Brooke's like, we have a long weekend. The only advice I can give you is your feelings are valid, but you just got to understand that there's other people involved in the whole thing. We're not your enemy. We're just very hurt friends. I feel like they're expecting me to just come in and grovel at their feet and beg for forgiveness, Sandoval says in a talking head. And, you know, this is the point where Schwartz kind of should be helping Sandoval. Like, do not leave Sandoval alone in these situations because Sandoval does, like Sandoval thinks he always forgets that his was the most, like, even if it wasn't done out of malicious intent, it did hurt everybody. And that's what caused the maliciousness. The maliciousness wouldn't have been there if what he did wasn't what he did. Like, I, I feel like, why are we still even talking about this? It just seems like he doesn't understand it. And that's the wild thing. Cause in his head, he's like thinking about podcasts. Like he's thinking like, well, I should have done this and we should have talked about it briefly at the reunion and then just moved on. And instead of like, I just feel like how easy it would be. And Schwartz thinks the same thing of like, just be like, dude, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm so sorry. I'm a fucking idiot. I, this was all not handled in the way that I wanted to handle it at all. Oh my God. And yes, I can understand all of your anger. I, I like, and the fact that you're there in that house, you should be even more understanding of like, oh my God, there should be a little bit of a grovel fest. The fact that he's defending himself is so interesting because he's still defending himself to this day. And I'm still wondering what is, what are you defending at this point? Just because you didn't mean it out of malice, but you have to understand. And DJ James Kennedy points it out at the end of the episode. It's still going to come off that, you know, like it's, it's very weird. I don't know. I feel, but I, I just feel weird when it comes to these things because he doesn't seem to fully understand yet. In a talking head, he's like pushing conspiracies on podcast selling merch. So he's still not over the podcasting or the merch. This isn't just about them forgiving me, dude. Yeah. This is something we need to mutually move on from together, dude. So now they're all sitting outside uh, and Schwartz is like, we're going to check out Lisa's venue. And then Santa was like, by the way, thank you for everyone being so friendly to me. I really appreciate. And I want to build on that. So I have this girl, Shannon coming over tomorrow morning and she's going to do guided meditation, some yoga, some movement. I'm a big fan of that stuff. Yeah. As corny as it is, it's phenomenal. I don't think it's corny at all, Brock. And DJ James Kennedy is like a meditation specialist. Great. You know, Mr. Try hard is trying hard, you know, dude, guided meditation is like a solid replacement for alcohol for me, dude, dude. I went like two years without missing a day drinking. Literally. I mean, I was probably like pretty much a functional drunk, you know, just taking a break for now. And Lala's like, I don't think you have to make that call at all. You know, it doesn't have to be a forever thing. Even with myself, who's committed to sobriety, it's still a day by day thing. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And Lala's like, hearing Sandoval working on his, you know, self, I think it's admirable. He blew his life up to face the issue, whether it's bullshit or not. Who gives a fuck? We don't have to go to bed in his mind at night. And that's a very good point by Lala. Yeah, we do not have to go to bed in his you know, with his mind at night at all. Thank God. Imagine what that's like. Just OJ Simpson chases Danny Masterson shit. Like, no, we do not have to do that at all. And we have to remind ourselves of that. Tom does. And now Tom is back to the drinking. And I don't think that is potentially helping his current situation anymore. But um, I think this is interesting. Also, it reminds me of Jax's Reiki healer. Remember that season when Jax had the special Reiki friend? Oh man. I hope that person shows up on the Valley. But I think it's funny that we come off this talking head of Sandoval going like, no, we need to mutually get, you know, come to a conclusion, dude, not just them, me too. And then he's like, thanks everybody. Thanks for being nice to me. It's like, you're playing it one way in the talking heads, you're playing it another way in front of them. So once again, it ultimately is disingenuous. And that's the kind of problem with Sandoval is even when, you know, the offer is here for a redemption season, he seems to step up to the precipice, but not go the full way through because he still is holding on to that anger, right? So then 
you know, it's, it's like, you just get spoiled with future Tom Sandoval. Like we saw him on the Nick file podcast. That's future Tom Sandoval still angry. We see him in this scene where he's thankful. Everybody's being nice to him, but then in a talking head filmed after this, he's angry again. And it's like, try to choose one lane and commit to that. Just like you're committing to your sobriety right now. So Santa was like, I'm trying to experience everything right now that I used to be drinking, but with not drinking. And Schwartz is like, not sex though, right? <laughs> and this is when Lisa brings Graham, surprises Graham. And everybody's like, what the fuck? So Graham runs down. Literally, I just... Yeah, no. I... That Graham... Like, you! Fuck you, dude! Fuck you! It's that dude! Where's your mustache? Anyways, Santa was like, wow, dude. And Lola's like, is this a joke? And I was like, no, Graham's with us now. So they must have kept that a secret from the gang. The gang. And Lisa comes down. I was like, I'm just here um, to drop off this dog while I'm preparing Wolf, the sexiest restaurant in Tahoe. And... You know, Lisa's like, I'm not going to say anything. I'll see you tonight, you know. And DJ James Kennedy's like, we've all had a tough couple of months, uh, Lisa. Because she says something about Sandoval having a tough couple of months. And James Kennedy's like, say hello to the gang. We're going to rename him to Hippie. The name Hippie is in homage to my late godfather, George Michael's dog, Hippie. That was a dog that I would see growing up. And DJ James Kennedy lets everybody know, he's been responding to Hippie just a little bit, yes. I was never a lo louder dog growing up, but now as an adult, I get the opportunity to name him myself. Because Lord knows I didn't pick Graham Cracker, Jesus Christ. Brock's like, what the fuck? What the fuck? And DJ James Kennedy's like, my mind's blown it as well, you know. You go away a certain period of time. Anyway, he's my little buddy. He's with me again. I love him so much. And I also love Ali Bali. DJ Sandoval's like, um, what James is saying in regard to Graham is not the case. Because Sandoval knows the story told by Rachel, right? And uh, then we see Graham, I think, shit on the patio and wipe his ass. No, that's not a joke. He really does that. Sandoval's like, he's not in a head bathe to hear what I have to say right now. And I definitely don't want to be making any waves. Finally, you did something smart. Anyways, Ali and Sandoval talk. And Sandoval goes, well, I do know. He did bite a couple people and they did try to fight him home. And that's the last I heard. And Ellie's like, okay, okay. And uh, Schwartz is sitting on the dock with everybody. He's like, that was the plot, like twist of the century. And Brock's like, she's not coming back this summer, huh? Rachel, she's not coming back. Anyways, Sandoval and Allie are talking and Allie makes this point of like, wait, if, if, Rachel can change her name from Raquel to Rachel. Then we can change Graham's name to hippie. And Santa was like, ah, uh, shit, dude, she's got me on that one. Anyways, now we have a fun montage of just uh, the lake life. People are jumping. We're seeing Brock's budgie smuggler, uh, a lot of dives, just fun water, water sports folks. We see Sheena with a camera. The girls are doing like some hand mo motions. Uh, Sandoval is trying to do the karate kid kick on a rock. Schwartz is pulling himself out of the water. And then it ends with a overhead shot of Tom Sandoval splayed on the rocks in the lake. Oh, dude, get a shot of me. Get a shot of me laying on the rocks, dude. Like uh, uh, laying down Jesus. Anyways, we cut to Ariana talking to Lucinda, who is a designer. And I guess Ariana is literally considered taking Tom's offer about the house, but she says for the walls, not all the furniture and the custom design stuff that she paid for. And, you know, I think that's actually interesting and it's going to be interesting to see how they get away from that completely. Um, so she's like, Tom needs to make me an offer for all of this stuff potentially. And, you know, she's like, you don't just get to have this, but she is coming around to the idea of him having the house. And we see all the custom. And by the way, that house is full of like custom furniture. I, I do not ever have ever shopped at a nice furniture place. We'd see a shot of Ariana's room again. And it once again does look like a bunker clothes there. I don't think there are closets in this house. The closets are on the bed. We uh, also hear that she's considering just giving like leaving the credenza where the pumpkin, the dumpling lattes uh, came out of. Uh, so I think that's, that's noble. Also the Lego, you know, the Lego painting, not the, the, it's like that, that image of 
her and Tom from the, uh, the cocktail book. I guess that's all made out of Legos. And the Lego designer said, Hey, I would consider just, you know, changing it up and making it of just you, or you could just give it to me for my reality show museum. That would be just a stunning piece for people to come in and see that Lego. And if I could just, I know the Bubba 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 from Tom and Katie's old place got, you know, thrown away. But if we could find that, just imagine me going around to trash bins across America trying to find that. And then we're in the Tahoe place and Schwartz gets stung by a bee. That's a bad sign, right? Even bees are angry about this trip. Um, so then DJ James Kennedy and Allie are talking um, and Allie's like, listen, I told Tom about Rachel changing her name to, from Raquel to Rachel and why like, we'll change Graham to hippie. And DJ James Kennedy's like, you told him that. Oh, that's funny. Good one. Allie Dally, Allie Bally. Good one. Then Summer Moon is FaceTiming with her parents and like, did Tom unblock me yet? No, we're working on it. We're going to do that on the second night, I think. Anyways, they kiss. She hangs up. Very cute. Uh, family life. And now Brock is like, listen, I've got some time away to reflect and I'd like to apologize because it's been bothering me ever since we went shopping for the bikini that I should be more aware of my surroundings. huh? I should and care more about not just my feelings, but yours. And she's like, thank you. I was just so caught off guard. Sheena says I was just in defense mode. Long story short, I obviously would like to get through this weekend with everybody and work on it. Yeah. So we just, uh, you know, let's enjoy Tahoe for a second, right? Do you think they, like, I don't want to think about that. I was just thinking about, like, do you, are they working on a second kid? You know, like, I don't know. Anyway, I don't want to think about that. But Brock, I love when uh, characters in reality shows uh, finally put it together in their head that they're coming off completely brash and unacceptable. Uh, we cut to Schwartz taking care of himself and the bee sting by pouring whiskey onto his bee sting and also sipping from the bottle of whiskey as well. Now I'm no Doogie Hauser, but is this, is this something safe? Is this, is this, is this help the, the bee sting? I don't know. Now this is a great scene, folks. We go to Wolf, but it is not done yet. They're literally, it is just under construction. We see Lisa with a sledgehammer breaking down a wall. And by the way, I almost think this is a fake wall that they put up just for this scene. But Nicolane gets his own Chiron. Nicolane. And Lala's like, I've never seen one of your restaurants from the time that it looks like this. And Lisa's like, Tom, Tom. And Lala's like, was it like this? And we see flashbacks in 2017. And uh, Lisa's like, and Tom, Tom used to be a sex shop. There were dildos on the windows. Right, Nicolane? Anyways, this space is very big, but Lisa's like, it's not as big as it looks. I bet you've heard that before. I haven't. Did you know it's almost as big as you as a cup? I can't believe that. We see concept designs. It looks like all of their places, but just darker and more antlers. I think antlers might be big right now. Anyways, they said the restaurant will be ready on time. They're making jokes about that and about how long it took Schwartz and Sandy's, of like Lisa and Ken going in when it wasn't done yet. and. Lisa's like, if any of you want to hit the wall and scream out something that you wanted to hit at the time, go and do it. I know you do, pointed to DJ James Kennedy. And Brock's like, yeah, I hit the wall and leave it on the wall. And so James picks up a sledgehammer and he goes, should I've looked off the ground better and slams the wall. And then Schwartz goes, I don't want to be single at 40 and hits the wall. But this is the shit with Schwartz, right? Like Schwartz doesn't have to be single at 40. In fact, he's probably not single at 40. Like the guy's dance card is full. Like, I just think it's funny that like, no, like that's remember that's Schwartz is choosing to be single at 40. If he is single at 40. Right. Uh, I know tons of people that would want to be with Schwartz. And I think people in his life that like are kind of have a situationship with Schwartz. But I think that's cute. And then Sheena picks it up. It's like motherfucking restraining order. Kind of like the screamo version of a good as gold. She's like, okay, who, who's next? And Sandoval goes, I'll do it, dude. And he goes, scumbag and cheater. And then hits it. And everybody's like, okay. And he's like, Ugh. we're with the mustache. Ugh. Charles Manson's son. And Lala's like, I called him that. Lala. Ugh. <laughs> and they're all kind of laughing, but scared. If Sandoval could just admit that he's wrong, I would seriously just like start listening to him. That's all it takes. I'm fucking sorry. And Lala goes, how about you hit the wall for your actions though? And he goes, James Kennedy and hits the wall again. 
And Lola's like, yeah, everybody else, but let's remember why this happened. And then he goes, motherfucking Sandoval, and hits it again. And then they're off to have a drink. Now, the obvious thing, Sandoval, like, why the fuck would you do any of that shit? You should have literally hit the wall and go, my own action, dude. Being attracted to Rachel, dude. Not telling Ariana when it first happened, dude. That should have been all the hitting. Like, the prison that I created for myself. OJ Simpson. Danny Masterson, dude. Like, I, it's it's just weird. Like, once again, we're supposed to feel like, I don't know what in his, like, are we all supposed to an audience go, holy shit, he's right. All of these fucking people, they put his penis inside of this Rachel girl. What? Like, it's, I don't know, you guys. It's so hard to root for this guy. So now they're off to uh, have a very beautiful dinner at Friday Station in Har- Harris. And so the gang walks in here. And Tom is in, you know, the cowboy outfit, the Ken. I'm just Ken. He's in that little, you know, anyways. And Graham is at the restaurant. Is this, why is Graham just like, I get it. Graham's back, but why are we just putting him everywhere? Like, I don't, I don't understand. Like, this is a restaurant. Is he, he, anyways. So the plan for tonight, Schwartz is like, we, uh, there's a little bar we could go to. No pressure. Go to a bar, gamble. I don't know. And Lisa comes in with Nick Elaine and Ken. Ken is just hobbling in the background, you know. She's like, let's get this party started. Lisa has now had three outfit changes. She's better than Cher in Tahoe. And uh, Schwartz gets a dirty martini. And Lisa goes, a dirty martini, you dirty boy. And then Nick Elaine orders one as well. I'll take one. Of course you will, Nick. You're a dirty martini boy as well. Yes. And so everybody's like kind of, getting a little getting, you know, getting their appetizer. And Lisa's like, uh, Schwartz, when you hit the wall, it was very troubling. You said, I hate being single at 40. Did you mean that? Schwartz is like, uh, it's, it's not, it's not as sad as it sounds. And Lala goes, are, are you really single? I think you and Joe are together. And Sheena's like, Schwartz, be honest. He friends with benefits who doesn't live with him. She does not live with me. And she's like, that's what I said. She has a, he's like, she has a rental property. I'm single. I'm not stoked about it, but I don't have the emotional cast capacity to be in a relationship. I'm single and not ready to mingle. And then Sandoval, we see, he goes, Hey Brock, look dude. And he does a really quick uh, selfie of him and Brock. Sandoval's like, Oh dude, I'm going to post this immediately and show Ariana that I'm getting back into the friend group, dude. And Lisa kind of looks and smiling like, look what I've done. I'm such a good person. You know what, James, this is the feel good factor. The last couple of days. What is something that you like about Sandal? The worst table game you could ever play. And DJ Jameson is like, oh my God, Lisa. Sandal like, no, oh, dude, that's great. Don't make him do that. That felt awkward, Lisa. But I would like to hear it. Um, I'm starving. You know, I got to eat before I have any conversation right now. You know, you know, we're sitting at the table together. I think it's nice, you know. And Schwartz is like, yeah, yeah, that's nice. And James is like, I feel very put on the spot. But then I think about how much he should feel on the spot, you know, and it's got to be embarrassing for him. Embarrassing. I like that. It was like, <laughs> DJ James Kennedy was like, you know, we're at a table with high back chairs and that's good on your back. And Schwartz is like, oh, it's nice. That's yeah, very cool, man. That's very good. You hear that, Sandoval? Anyways, now Sandoval's telling Brock that he put an offer for the house to buy her out. And he's like, you guys aren't talking, huh? And he's like, I haven't actually spoken to her since the reunion. She wants to talk to me. I would totally talk to her. But, you know, if you, you know, it's just not going to enrage her, you know, I don't want to do that. And she's like, I cannot imagine how hard it is for Ariana still living in the house with Sandoval. It's like having a hard time. I'm like having a hard time even being at the same table with him. And I don't understand how either of them can fully move on. Until they have a complete break. And Sheena is dead on right. Like this, this at the end of the day, it's right. But I do want to point out, you know, both of them were away. Like it wasn't like day in, day out. Both of them were doing so many things. And the Dancing with the Stars, I know she was staying at, like it was and when Dan was in town, they were staying elsewhere. It wasn't like, but yeah, it's weird. 
it's completely weird, you know, but there is a financial component. There is also a pride component. There is this guy's not going to fucking just to like have me move out and Sh- Sandoval's not going to move. Like it's very weird. It's war of the roses and Sandoval should have just gotten out until Ariana figured it out. And I think things would have probably gone on a lot quicker, but it's like, that's still, it, it goes a lot in line with how I'm saying his behavior is, you know, wanting everybody to like make up with him, but at the same time being really incredibly angry and in indignant and that's what that move shows me anyways lisa's like raise your glasses howl at the moon weirdo nick elaine cheers to nick and they all go woo, woo, and do like little wolf noises whatever okay so dinner is over now what is next this is i believe the last scene of this episode so they go to this little bar outside Everybody's saying it was a really good day. Everybody's ordering drinks. Uh, You know, Lala sparkling water. Schwartz is going to do like shot of bourbon and a Coors Light. But then Brock and Sheena order two shots of tequila. And he's like, do you mind if I change my order and I get a shot of tequila? So it's great. And Lala's like, what should we expect tomorrow, Sandoval? From our wellness facilitator, Lala? She's going to sort of like read the room, you know. She's going to read the room and just talk about how shitty your podcast is. is. You hurt me. Anyways, DJ James Kennedy's like, can we talk? You know, nobody's throwing a drink in anybody's face yet. It's very chill. Sandoval and talking is like, I know James. It's very hurt, dude. And then he goes, hey, James, you think we can maybe um go for a walk, dude? And James is like, okay. Okay. He's like, oh shit. He's like, we'll stay like within like viewing distance so people can take an eye on us. And Sandoval's like, in a talking head, like, if I don't just rip the bandaid off, it just won't happen, dude. So DJ James Kennedy and Sandoval sit to finally talk. He's like, I don't want to cause any problems. I don't want to create hostility, dude. Just want to coexist. Uh, I feel you. Yeah. When it went down, I was scared to talk to you, dude. It was just so overwhelming. It doesn't give you an excuse, bro. I'm not saying the deceit and betrayal. I never, and nor did she ever mean to like hurt anybody. Nobody wants to hurt anybody, Tom, but you knew it would. What was ever going to come of this? That could possibly not be fucking catastrophic. You don't think if you were smart enough, you could have ended things with Ariana and then actually made things work with Raquel. I love that DJ James Kennedy nails it immediately. Like... He's like, you knew it would hurt people. I know you didn't. Nobody wants to hurt somebody, but you knew it would. I mean, that really is it in a nutshell. They both knew it would. They both knew it would. Rachel admits it. Tom doesn't. And then it's like, you you know, you don't think you could have handled it better. You know, told Ariana and walked out the door. And, you know, no, Sandoval couldn't do that. Like, he felt he couldn't do that. And, uh... Sandoval, like, it's so easy for people to say that. It's like, if you really wanted to, you could walk out the door. You say what you have to say. Look her in the eye. Bye-bye. Shut the fucking door. I mean, it just comes down to not being able to, like, man up and, like, leave the relationship. Ariana and I have built our entire life together, dude. It might be that easy for you to do that, but it's just... If that's what you wanted, it, it wasn't that simple, James. If that's what you really wanted, honestly, honestly. Yes, yeah. And DJ James Kennedy just shakes his head. Do you think you're going to be with her now when she comes back? Dude, I don't know, man. I'm just basically torn between like resentment and like love. Was it all worth it? Like to where you are now, Tom? I don't, I don't know. Sorry to hear that, bro. It wasn't just about being with Rachel, he tells us in a talking head. It was also getting out of the relationship that I know wasn't suiting my life. The path that I was on was not a good path. It needed to change. And that's a very interesting statement too. But the funny thing is, Ariana didn't know they were on the wrong path. And I think that's where it all kind of gets a little cloudy. And I would also kind of argue, are you on a good path now? Are you on a good path? Because it also, and now, you know, other podcasts are talking, what was it? Was it the Howie Mandel pod? What, What podcast was it? That somebody was like, oh, yeah, I did a Tom over the summer. You know, it didn't work out. And now I see you as a girl. But like, it seems like the guy was getting around. He was like sowing his wild oats over the summer, even through all of this pain, which I know he probably really was in. But he was still doing his Tom thing, uh, living his rock star life. 
Um, so I don't know, like, I mean, you know, now in retrospect, he's like, I knew I had to get out of this, but like, he not, he did not have that bravery to do that. And I also will point out DJ James Kennedy, I believe in other past relationships, he probably has not had that bravery either because I believe Rachel was the one that ended their engagement. Um, and you know, DJ James Kennedy obviously has done bad things in the past himself. Um, I don't know. It's a very interesting conversation because James Kennedy seems to nail it, but at the same time, doesn't seem to be able to go there with him on the fact that Tom couldn't man up um, and not doing any self-reflection with himself on that one. And DJ James Kennedy's like, look, say it or not. Okay. We were boys, bro. We were, we've gone through a lot together in our life. I'm sorry. Yeah, we are. And I'm sorry for discounting that. And, and, and then it's like the confusion, bro. Like, my God, have I ever had a real friend in my fucking goddamn life? You were meant to be the most trustworthy. You were the guy. I know. Yeah, down the fucking drain. Tom Sandoval was the last person in Hollywood that was going to fuck me over, you know, he says in a talking head. He was the one guy that I really did trust with all my might. It just blows my mind that he was the one to backstab me like harder than anybody else ever has. Sandoval's like, I can't obviously take back what I've done and I have to accept what I did and just basically embrace it and be like, yo, don't ever do that fucking shit again, you fucking idiot. Which is, that's what he should have fucking said at the wall when he was with the sledgehammer. Don't ever fucking do that shit ever again, Tom. Like, he should be talking to himself slamming the wall. But James is like, right, right, okay. Yeah. And Sandoval's like, you know what I mean, dude? And that's the thing, you know, it's becoming clear the emotions of, well, first off, a very dark statement of DJ James Kennedy said, have I ever had a real fucking friend in my life? And I thought that was a very telling statement. But also then Sandoval, of just the Sandoval of it all, of like, you were my big brother. I did look up to you. And I'm, I got to tell you, as somebody that really like, I really thought Tom had it on lock. I thought he had life figured out, which shows you what a fucking idiot I am. I mean, that is truly cringe. But we shouldn't be looking up to anybody in the first, you know, like, I don't know, larger conversations. Right. But anyways, DJ James Kennedy's listening. He's like, right, 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 right. You know? Um, but I, he's like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm talking to him, he's like, I know I threw it up and hurt people, dude. And I know I hurt James. I'm taking accountability for that. I'm, I'm sorry, James. He's like, thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. I want to acknowledge his feelings and make amends. Damn, just got to take this all in and just like fucking, just like, you know, yeah, I do. I mean it, dude. I don't know. Like, I, you know, I miss it all, Tom, don't you? I miss the whole thing, don't you? All the good times, bro. All the good, like, I miss all of that. And we have a flashback of the good times with Sandoval and DJ James Kennedy. One is his trumpet playing. And one is him making uh, DJ James Kennedy a dumpling latte. And remember, you know, DJ James Kennedy talking about the engagement to, to Rachel where Richella took place, you know, Sandoval helped with that. And then of course, one of the special moments is DJ James Kennedy teen off of Sandoval's bare ass on a golf course. He's like, you know what breaks my heart? You were like a big bro to me. You really will. I fucking mean that. And then it's like, nothing will ever be like the same. And I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry for this. And that's why, that's why I've been so angry, bro. That's when I say betrayal, the ultimate betrayal. And said, I was like, listen, at your ease, we'll work through this, okay? And I promise to listen to you better. I, at your pace, dude. Just the tip, dude. Just the tip. And Sandoval's like, uh, DJ Kim's like, let's get through the night. Let's just get through the night. And then they hug it out. So we'll see where that goes. But I think DJ James Kennedy has a healthy skepticism of Tom Sandoval, which he should. These people shouldn't just be letting their guard down immediately. But there's a lot of history there, of course. But it is funny what is considered special moments to these people. Next time on Vanderpump Rules, we see them on a boat. We see Sandoval fighting with Lala. Um, Sandoval like, you don't even share anything about your life. Are you fucking kidding me? And Lala going, you're insane. And then Katie and Ariana talking. If they want to be friends with him, you aren't going to be their friend. And Ariana going, no. And then we see Ariana FaceTiming Sheena. And Sheena's like, I can't keep hating him for you. And Ariana's like, Zikes. So that was this week's episode, folks. What did you think? Uh, hopefully this made it a little bit more enjoyable. Um, I don't know really. I mean, it's those little funny moments that I get enjoyment out of, but it's a really weird situation, obviously. And it almost makes you long for the days of bad seasons like season eight and season nine. I'm not saying it's a bad season. It's just different because there's so many feelings attached to it for the audience, uh, for them, obviously. And you see that anger spill out everywhere from Tom, from us. 
Um, and I don't think there's going to be a conclusion because we already know where he's at right now and what he is still doing. So that's it, folks. Also, that after show is interesting. If you want more clarification on certain things, I think it's it's uh, worth the watch. But come back here on Friday. We'll talk in Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. We'll talk about a lot of other stuff. Go listen to that Spencer and Heidi podcast. I hope you like it. Uh, shout out to all, to, to all you guys, to all my haters out there, to everybody. I appreciate you listening. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's it, dude. Just, yeah, just graham cracker, hippie. Let's just give some thoughts for hippie, okay? Bye, guys.